Our objective is to simulate the tactile sensations due to the textures or relief of images displayed on a computer screen. Today, if you move the cursor of your mouse across an image such as this leaf, for example, you feel absolutely nothing. What we want to do is to give you the sensation of touching the leaf, its fibers and its veins, just as if you were running your finger over it. The technique we propose to achieve this goal consists in modifying the cursor speed on the screen when it crosses the image, slowing it down or speeding it up. Here is an example to simulate two simple shapes, a hole and a bump. If we want to give the illusion that the cursor is climbing up a slope, we slow it down. Conversely, to simulate it's going down the same slope, we accelerate it. For example, when you cross a bump, the cursor first slows down, going up to the top of the bump, and then speeds up until it reaches the bottom of the bump. The first experiment we propose measures the subject's ability to identify holes and bumps using our technique. The subject moves a small round green cursor with the mouse. The environment corresponds to a top view of a planar surface as if you were looking at a table or at the floor from above. At the center of the screen, we place a white disc shaped mask, three kinds of surfaces may be found behind the mask at random, a hole, a bump, or a perfectly flat surface. The subject must run the cursor over the mask and try to guess which one of the three is the simulated surface. The subject enters the answer on the keyboard using the 1, 2 and 3 keys, respectively corresponding to the answers, bump, whole and flat. Yeah, it's a bump. The task complexity depends on the various parameters that are at our disposal. The height or depth of the holes or bumps, their radius and the simulation profile used we find a percentage of correct answers of more than 92% over the whole set of tests. This shows that with our technique, subjects are capable of identifying the holes and bumps very, very efficiently. However, the slope of simulated profiles has a strong influence on subject responses. The steeper the slope, the higher the percentage of correct answers. This task is slightly more complex than in the first experiment. This time we do not display the white mask that formerly marked the location of the simulated surface. Moreover, the latter may be anywhere on the screen. The subject's task is thus to move the cursor around the screen in order to find out if a hole or bump is present in the environment and to set the cursor at what the subject deems to be the center of the object. Once the cursor is in place, the subject enters an answer on the keyboard, selecting one of the three possible answers, whole, bump or flat. It's a hole. We find an 86% rate of correct answers over the whole set of test cases under harder experimental conditions. The second experiment thus shows that sub Objects are capable of identifying surfaces solely based on cursor movements. The experimental conditions are identical to those of the first experiment. The white mask is back in the environment, but this time we ask the subject to draw a cross-section of what the simulated surface looks like. 
we use three different types of simulation profiles. One linear curve, one Gaussian curve, and one polynomial curve, which is thus strongly discontinuous at its base. When we observe the drawings done by 20 subjects, we recognise the characteristics of these simulation profiles used. Gaussian profiles are generally drawn thinner than the others, with a horizontal tangent at their base. Polynomial profiles are drawn with a wide plateau at the centre and sharp slopes at the base. Linear profiles are more commonly drawn with diagonal tangents at the extremities. The three experiments validated our technique by showing that subjects were able to recognise and precisely draw simulated reliefs. The proposed technique can now be used to simulate 2D image relief and textures. Here we can fill the veins of the leaf. Or here we can hit the bars of the grid. The algorithm we use consists in deducing a topography or height map of an image based on its colours or grayscale levels. When the cursor moves from a dark pixel to a clear pixel, it is slowed down. On very high contrast images, the cursor can be literally stopped. In this labyrinth, the black wall's block cursor moves and thus slides along their contour. Applications of this technique are numerous, concerning, first of all, relief perception in images and pictures for recreational or professional purposes, image retouch-up, for example. It can be used on the internet in order to add new effects concerning the cursor to web pages. In this example, a hole was placed on a web page over a hypertext link. This makes the link attractive, that is to say that it will attract users and that the latter will have to force themselves to get away from the link. The technique can also be used to have a better perception of the elements of a computer desktop. For example, feeling the relief or textures of an icon or a button, or feeling the edges of a window on your graphic interface. It would also be easier to navigate a menu tree with a guided cursor, or even a cursor constrained on a trajectory. But other applications are also possible, such as assistance to visually impaired persons in computer access via easier mouse use. Or video games in which user immersion could be reinforced by providing new sensations, this time more tactile.